So I'm really excited to be able to uh, share with you all. I can't tell you how much effort, <laughs> a lot of effort um, that's been going into uh, uh, Fathomverse. Um, and so remember this slide, I was talking about the approach that we've been funded uh, through the National Science Foundation's Convergence Accelerator uh, to try and build out these various platforms that address um, you know, human AI interfaces for different uh, groups of with expertise or differing of expertise. Uh, so the game Fathomverse lives in this area where we're hoping to engage uh, enthusiasts um, and, and hopefully a very broad and big community. Uh, Fathomverse, the tagline is explore the depths. Uh, what it is, is a mobile phone app uh, that can be download downloaded on either your iOS or Android devices. Um, and the audience for the game are high school aged players and up. Uh, the primary and secondary audiences include ocean lovers, animal lovers, armchair explorers, as well as communities that are unrepresented in ocean science. Um, really, the point of this game is we're not, if people hate the environment or hate the planet, we're not changing their minds. But if people who care about ocean life um, or just animals in general uh, play this game, they are contributing meaningfully to uh, data pipelines that we're trying to uh, build and create. Um, and Last summer, we beta tested Fathomverse uh, over a two month long period. We had almost 3000 people sign up, um, more than a thousand unique users playing the game. And in that two month period of time, we they generated over 430,000 annotations uh, that were currently pouring over. Um, people are still playing the MVP uh, actually, and I haven't checked these numbers, but I think a few months ago I looked and we had over 600,000 annotations. So it's it's pretty impressive what this, you know, relatively small, but right, a thousand people have already been able to accomplish using using the Fathomverse game. Um, and so the, the beta testing results will be a subject of a, a paper that I'm hoping our team will write up uh, very shortly. Uh, but the design pillars uh, over which Fathomverse has been built upon um, are these five themes. Uh, first and foremost is we're providing uh, exploration experience. So players have agency to um, have choices on which missions they want to take and allow them to follow their own curiosity. Uh, the second pillar is blissful productivity. So creating uh, an audiovisual pleasure uh, that makes the core game tasks feel pl blissfully productive. Now, I don't think all time that you spend should be productive. But if you wind up playing this game, you can also be productive and helpful and contribute meaningfully to our data pipelines. Um, we're also really, really focused on casual play. Um, part of the reason why we wanted to stay away from game consoles and VR is, you know, that's, that's a lot of investment in hardware that you need in order just to play those games. And so what we wanted to do was to create an, an, a phone app that then anyone can use and access using their cellular phone, but also uh, by creating these play sessions that are short um, and in digestible steps. And so that means you could be on the bus commuting home uh, and playing this game or uh, you know, uh, waiting for your kids at the soccer practice and, and also playing this game. Uh, we're also built on an inspiring mission, right? I think, I don't think I need to convince this audience here, but you know, the, the work that we're doing is really, really important for us to understand life in the ocean. And so we're providing an awe inspiring mission, which is discovering all ocean life and inviting those game players to participate. Um, and finally, what we're really, really focused on is, is keeping everything really real. We aren't creating some fake narrative for people to, um, you know, uh, kind of uh, experience the game through. Uh, what we're trying to do is, again, make this very real connection that as a game player, you are contributing directly to science. And at a high level, the way we've structured the game is so that we can also um, future-proof uh, the game as either new uh, data comes in, new types of labels uh, that are needed by the community comes in, uh, and that sort of thing. And the way that is done is through the creation of a number of mini games. And so the way you enter the game is through a splash screen and the hub, and from the hub is where a game player has the option to select 
a number of different mini games. And these mini games are really the data interactions. So this is where the game players are looking at images, evaluating images, and then labeling them in some way. And then as part of that process, they're generating a score, they're, they're being provided feedback on how, how, how accurate they are based on uh, their performance on labeled data, but we're also spending a lot of time creating rewards. So how do we reward behavior uh, and contributions that the game players are providing? But what makes this all really extensible is that we can create a number of different mini games uh, over time. Uh, and so as part of the minimum viable product or MVP, which is what we released in beta, uh, we started with these three features. Uh, the first is uh, cl a classification mini game. So we're asking people to uh, name things or classify animals in, in imagery. Um, we started with 12 animal groups uh, as a mission or as available missions. These are all benthic groups. But I want to say that these are super categories, right? So higher level taxonomic groups. We're not asking people to identify things uh, to genus or species level. Um, and then finally, um, as part of that activity, they the game player can generate an overall score. So you can see how you're, you're progressing and how you're contributing over time. Um, and so what I want to share with you is a walkthrough of the MVP or the beta. So as you load the game, you've got three different active missions. And at each one of these missions, you can uh, access what we call mission briefings. So this is educational material that shows you re representative images of those animal groups, but also images of uh, animals that can be confusing for people. Um, and then once you are quote unquote trained, you can then select those missions and then go on a dive. And in the dive, this is one of the mini games, uh, you can interact with imagery that are um, a, a part of the dive. You can um, send a pulse that will open up images. And then you have the, 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 the decision to make about whether or not you want to collect those images if either they match your mission or if you know for whatever reason you, you might want to collect them. Um, and so this is a, a really important activity, right, collection, which we've separated from <clears throat> the, the next activity, which is actually labeling. Uh, and so after you've revealed or looked at anywhere from 25 to 50 images in the dive, you then are scored um, based on how many animals you, you perhaps looked at. And then here is the labeling interaction. Again, this is for MVP or the beta, where you're then asked to um, you know, sort these different images into the animal groups that are either your missions or none of these. Now, keep in mind, selecting none of these actually generates negative labels that we retain within the game that we then later use to, um, you know, verify uh, the, the label outcome. Um, and so that's an example of what the beta looks like. And the way this works, um, if you think about it, um, and I'm going to explain this in two different ways, <clears throat> the idea here, right, is because Fathomet exists, we have labeled data, um, We that can be useful for the game in a number of different ways. Um, and if you have your own visual data, right, say you have your own ROV dives or you have your own drop cameras, you can upload that data into the portal. And through the portal, you can pull labeled data for uh, machine learning models from Fathomnet. Um, but What's I think really interesting for the game, at least, is that a FathomNet provides a source of labeled data and the portal provides a source of unlabeled data. And the goal of the game, right, is to convert that unlabeled data to labeled data. Um, and so once the game players look at the uh, unlabeled data, they can generate labels, which I'll talk a little bit about how that is done. And then the goal here, right, is to get new labeled data into FathomNet so that the experts, the marine scientists can potentially review and, um, you know, get those labels down to more um, fine grained levels uh, like genus or species instead of the high levels that they come in uh, in the game. But then I also want to say, like, you know, there's labeled data, there's unlabeled data, but there's also that educational content that's coming into the game. And this is um, organizing all of this content is not very straightforward. And so what we also had to build on top of the game is a content management system or CMS that organizes the labeled, unlabeled data and the educational content and make sure um, that the information that's being shared with the game is, well, one, appropriate, 
And two, that the information coming out of the game has value to the community. So it evaluates the consensus protocols and then pushes the data into the right uh, repository. And so the way this works, again, another way of describing this is that you know, the portal, as I said, is a source of unlabeled data. So that's where you see those red question marks. And FathomNet is a source of labeled data. So those are green check marks because these are things that, you know, is known or at least verified uh, by the community. Um, and then within the CMS, what happens is, is that data is pushed to the CMS and the CMS takes that data and breaks it up into what we call play, unlabeled play contexts. So each collection of these images correspond to a single combination of missions that can be looked at within a dive. And the game will request an un request to have an unlabeled play context that it shows or reveals to the game player during their dive. Um, and so this is how the CMS then enables this process. And there's an actual uh, operator um, for operators that will be evaluating the data that's coming in and making sure that this process is kicked off um, for what we're calling a new labeling run. So we're getting data from these unlabeled sources and trying to push them to the game. And then after game players have played the, their specific dives, what, that, what they do is they're creating a labeled play context, but there's question marks there, right? Because they haven't been verified yet. And so what happens is, is as each player plays uh, a, a play context, what happens is you have many different player annotations. And the first thing that we're able to do is those, remember those green check marks. Uh, so those are, uh, in this case, they're green question marks because what we're trying to do is evaluate how well the game players were playing on the known data or the data from uh, FathomNet. And so that, that comparison results in a player reputation score. And it's that player reputation score then that we can use to help us identify, okay, um, number of players that, or a number of opinions that can result in, um, you know, a, I guess a, a, a good label or a pretty accurate label, um, or do we want to um, filter the, the player responses by, the player reputations so that we're only using uh, labels from players that perform extremely well and labeled data uh, for the unlabeled data outputs. But the idea then is from the player reputation or from this process of reviewing the data, we can create a consensus protocol that then allows us to get from lots and lots of these different annotations for a single play context into a labeled data set um, that has consensus that is then pushed to the portal and, and as well as FathomNet. Um, so I just wanna say that this is the process that's envisioned. We have a consensus protocol currently in place. That's I think very basic. We're doing, I think an average, I think it's a straight average of the game players responses to create a consensus. But over time, we're going to see um, more and more um, a variety in the way in which we come up with a consensus protocol as we learn more of this process. Uh, the final thing I also wanted to mention is that right now, at least the way the CMS has been built, um, you know, it's it's still kind of a manual process where data is going to be pushed from the portal into the game and then is reviewed uh, in, before these play contexts are generated. I think long term, our goal here is to also allow um, other sources of data to be pushed into the CMS and then shared with the game. Um, but so this is all part of, I think, the Ocean Vision AI R&D collaborative program. And so we'll be um, more having more discussions and definition of what this could look like in the future. Um, and so I just wanted to share with you some of the outcomes that we had from testing over the summer. Uh, so I, I mentioned these stats before, but as part of the beta testing, and um, I've never really interacted with beta testers around games before, but I, they wound up being a, a very uh, generous group with their time and their uh, opinions. And of those thousand uh, people that actually uh, played the game, uh, we had uh, almost 400 uh, feedback surveys that were uh, submitted. Uh, we also did 32 user interviews, uh, and so we got a lot of information from uh, beta testers. And the and I just wanted to highlight one of the the big outcomes is that you know we learned what their motivation was to keep playing the game, um, and the number one no question motivating factor was that 
you know, knowing that they're contributing to ocean discovery was something that uh, had them play the game and come and keep playing the game, even though there was no engagement mechanisms, or whatever built into the beta. The other thing we noticed too, is that even our beta testing created uh, quite a bit of online buzz. And I just wanna highlight some things, right? About how I think in general, artificial intelligence has a really negative uh, public opinion uh, for good reason, um, but what our project uh, provides is an example of a more positive outcome and people really resonated with this. You know, the fact that here's an example of AI use that um, they can rally behind and, and, and be excited about. Um, and so where we started with beta, we had these three different features. Uh, where we're going, uh, thanks to the NSF Convergence Accelerator funding, as well as more recently, the Schmidt Marine Technology Partners, which is a program with the Schmidt Family Foundation. Uh, they've also contributed uh, support so that the version one of the game is going to be significantly um, more. Uh, so not only are we gonna have a classification mini game, we're going to have a second classification mini game. We're revamping the labeling interactions so that you can label um, all of the animal groups that you are certified for. Uh, we've increased the number of animal missions from, I think, 12 up to 50. Uh, and you're going to see a gallery of sightings. Uh, you're you're going to be able to favorite things. Uh, you're going to have a training or an expeditions uh, in the terms of the modes at which you're interacting with the data. Uh, we're creating an ocean radio, so there's other soundtracks you can chill out to. Um, there's also flags and, where you can escalate findings to experts. And this is really important because we're trying to figure out how do we make connections between, you know, game players and experts. So if there are errors or issues within, let's say, the, the, the labeled data um, or issues with the consensus, we can actually get that information from the game uh, into the hands of the people who can make those uh, corrections. Um, and then finally, we're, we're creating um, a community resource around a Discord server. And so this is where we're going to be mostly interacting with game players, having, um, you know, weekly, uh, weekly animal missions um, and, and that sort of thing. So stay tuned. Um, and we're going to be launching, this says April, um, we're now targeting May 1st, uh, but we will be submitting the app uh, in the app stores in the middle of April. And so that can take about a week before it's ready to go. So I'm happy to take any questions if you have any. Hi, um, I have a question. First of all, thank you so much for this application. It's it's really an inspiring way to combine citizen scientists with AI in ocean conservation. Uh, but my question is, um, how can uh, we uh, integrate uh, um, with this game in terms of uh, our models and our unlabeled data? Is it, I guess, it's through Ocean Vision uh, platform, but then does that data get ingested automatically, both uh, um, in Phantom Net and uh, uh, to ourselves as well? Yeah, I mean, so we're still early in development, right? We haven't uh, officially launched the game. And so there's some things that we are currently evaluating. Um, we also have kind of short-term goals, but then a long-term, longer-term vision. So in the short term, what we're trying to do is kind of constrain the data, the data sources um, that is pushed to from the portal to Fathomverse. Um, we're hoping within, I think, the next beta and Ben, you can correct me, that we'll have that workflow at least fleshed out where a portal user can, um, you know, create, let's say, a quote unquote, a labeling run or uh, set aside a collection of data that can be the push to the game. Um, so that that's where we're starting. Um, and then one of the things that we're trying to evaluate is whether data from the game should only go back to the original source or should also go to Fathomet because one of the challenges, right, is if, you know, say I'm a fish expert and I'm not, um, I'm perhaps only interested in the fish uh, annotations that come out of the game, but there are researchers who want to get access to all of the other annotations that are in, in the game as well. And so that's part of the reason why we're wanting to uh, make sure that annotations from the game get pushed to Fathomet 
so that the broader community can see those labels as a starting point to then dial more deeply into the taxonomy. Um, and so the, what we're envisioning though for you know, other data sources is that we can create a CSV file or data output of the consensus labels that come out of the uh, labeling run that can then be shared with the original source uh, users so that they can use those annotations for their, their uh, particular use case.